Today, we're talking about plugins and Figma. Now, plugins are pretty awesome because they're a new addition to Figma. People coming from Sketch or XD, uh, actually, I don't know if XD has plugins or not. If I'm wrong, let me know, but from my limited knowledge, I don't think you'll have plugins yet. But Sketch, you've had plugins for a while. Uh, but Figma, we finally have plugins, and they're awesome. They allow us to extend the functionality of what Figma can do, and Figma has them integrated in a very easy way. If you want to view your plugins, they show up here in the left-hand navigation. Underneath the Drafts tab, you have Plugins. There you can see a list of featured and popular plugins along with what you have installed. To uninstall a plugin, just go over to the plugin you wish to uninstall and check the little minus button. It's that simple. To install a plugin, click on one, press install, and you're done. It's that easy. There's no downloading a file or uh, and adding it directly to the, to the application. Just one button press, super simple. So in this video, we could stop it here and you know, you understand how plugins work. They're, they're great. You install them very easily, but I want to show you some of my favorite plugins and how to use them. I added six plugins that we're going to go over today. Even though I do have a lot more that I use, don't feel you have to limit yourself with plugins. They can be as simple as, Hey, I have this one plugin that I use in this one specific instance, and that's fine. They don't need to be something you use every time you design something. They can totally be just a one-off useful tool and that's that's good that's what they're meant for but today i've got six plugins that i use pretty frequently and i'm going to show you what they do and why they're helpful so first up is unsplash this lets us easily add unsplash images to any selected layer then we have dominant color toolkit which lets us generate a palette from any image that we have selected content reel this lets us easily fill in text with different kinds of information like people's names or phone numbers Confetti, this lets us select a group of layers and generate a randomized confetti-like design from them. Brand Fetch, this lets us type in a web URL and then get the corresponding logo. And then Pattern Hero is similar to Confetti, but Pattern Hero lets us select a group of elements and then it will generate a grid from those elements as opposed to a randomized confetti-like design. I have a couple of examples here to show how each one of these works. First, let's start with Unsplash. Unsplash is awesome if you've never heard of it. It's a website that has royalty-free images on there, the very high quality. I highly recommend you check it out. And if you do use any of the images, make sure you give thanks to the user who uploaded them. That helps that site maintain its high quality work. Now pretend I'm making an Instagram feed here of architecture images, and I wanna go fill these in. Well, I could go to unsplash.com, look up a bunch of different images, copy and paste them in manually, scale them down, but that takes a lot of time. Arguably, I would say it's about five minutes of, of work, and that's five minutes too long. Instead, I could select all these layers, right click, go to plugins, and then go to unsplash, and then I am given the Unsplash user interface. Each plugin has a different interface, so spend time learning each plugin's interface and how you interact with each plugin. They don't have a, a specific requirement for how they have to integrate their interaction. Every plugin can do so differently, which arguably gives more control for the plugin developer as opposed to being forced to say, anchor your plugin on the right hand nav and it can only exist here. This lets the plugin do whatever it needs to do. All right, so anyways, I've got all these layers selected and I want architecture. I'm gonna press that button, let it load, and while it's loading, we'll sit here and, oh, and it's done. Just like that, didn't even get to finish my sentence. And now we have every single image filled. It's that easy to add your imagery and it will maintain its size and it fills it as a layer, which is super, super cool. All right, moving on to Dominant Color Toolkit. This is a pretty interesting one. It lets you take any image and then it will generate a color palette for you with some useful colors for things like text or the dominant color. So to use it, just right click on any image, go to Plugins, Dominant Color Toolkit, and then it will generate for us a frame with the image as well as the dominant color, recommend a text color and the full color palette that it got from that image. 
super cool, really helpful if you're doing designs that are very heavy under color usage based on your imagery. This is a lifesaver. Okay, content reel. We've all been there. We make a list of things and we have to fill that list with information. And it's almost always a person's name and that I am tired of writing down John Smith and Jane Doe and Jack Smith and whatever over and over again. And let alone dealing with phone numbers or emails or dates or your locations. We only have so much room in our brain when we're working on stuff. But what's great is I can just select all of these, right click, plugins, go to um, content reel, and then select names. And it's just like that, it's done. It's gotten all the names in there. And then if we wanted to configure that, we could go over to this menu and then we can configure the order that the names show up. And we can see a live preview right down here. See first name, last name. We can add a comma if we wanted. Whatever we wanted to do, we can do that here. We also can change the name types and what genders to use for the names. Now I'm going to go back and then I'm going to select all these. I want these to be phone numbers. So just as simply, I'll select all these layers and then click on phone. Just like that again. So easy. It added all the phone numbers. So this one's a really, really helpful tool if you're doing any kind of table designs or data work or dashboards. This will save you lots of time getting all those names in there. All right, now kind of time for a fun one here, confetti. Confetti lets you select a bunch of layers that you wish to create confetti out of. And confetti is more just a, a way of describing, hey, we're going to take these layers and we're going to just throw them all into the air and throw hundreds of them. So go to right click, plugins, confetti, and then we can do a couple of quick settings before we do that. I wanna throw 150 of them in the air. I wanna randomize the opacity and the rotation, and I'm gonna generate them. And just like that, they've all been tossed, and now we have some interesting looking confetti. Now, the confetti plugin will not do the colors or the shapes, that is up to you. So in order to get the best looking confetti, you may wanna play around with what colors and sizes and shapes you're using. The confetti plugin is just gonna take a small group of layers and make a lot of them and kind of throw them in the air for you. So it does save a lot of this tedious hand placement, but it won't actually make these shapes and stuff for you. That is still up to you. All right, brand fetch. This one is pretty interesting. If you've ever been doing a design that had social sharing icons or you just wanted to highlight uh, like teams who use this tool, you need to go grab those corporate logos. Well, now it's super easy. You can just right click in the blank space, go to plugins, go to brand fetch, and then type in say google.com, get logo, and it pulls the Google logo right away for you. Let's go ahead and do it again. Let's this time do uh, Twitter. Do uh, twitter.com, get logo, boom. Just like that, it's a really easy way to grab brand logos. And every day, I believe they're growing their service. You can look them up. I think they're trying to do this as part of a startup. So uh, I'm sure they're working on growing their list of supported logos. But you can follow them and their services to find out more about that. It is really helpful, though. All right, last but not least, Pattern Hero. This is similar to Confetti, where you select a bunch of layers, and then it will create more of them for you. However, this time it's creating a grid of columns and rows. Whereas confetti, it was like throwing them up. Pattern hero is going to create a grid of, of items. It will not randomize colors. So if you want to have that be part of your design, you need to put those colors in there yourself. So I have three different color dots here and I want to create uh, a cool little dotted repeated background. I'm gonna select these, I'm gonna right click, go to plugins, and then I'm gonna to go to pattern hero right here. 50 rows, 50 columns. The padding is how much room is between each element when it adds them. And then we can choose to group nodes, shuffle nodes, and repeat nodes. Uh, shuffle nodes, you should definitely have turned on if you're wanting to do a randomized design. If you want them to be a consistent pattern where it's you know dark, light, medium, dark, light, medium, as these are right here, you know, you can see that those colors, turn that off. With this turned on, it will randomize all the different positions of colors and stuff. Uh, but right now you can see it's not randomized because I have it turned off. But 
if I go ahead and undo that, turn it on and create pattern, now the colors are all randomized on where they're at. This is a bit too big. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, undo this. All right, we undid that. Now let's go ahead and change the number of rows. Let's say um, 40 and then make this say 35. We'll create a pattern. That's a bit better, so I like that. Now we can go ahead and reposition this inside here. And we got a nice little repeating background. This was the same technique used to create this background right here for this little demo. So those are all the plugins that I have to show you today. There are tons more, as you can see on my plugins list. Uh, I already use three times as many as we saw on that list, each one serving different purposes, like blobs, for example, is pretty interesting. It lets you create these cool little blobby shapes. There's lots of really powerful plugins with more added every day. Definitely take a look at it. Uh, find out what would be helpful for you. But plugins allow us to extend our workflow uh, and extend the functionality that we have in Figma. Some of these things I've seen mentioned are gonna come natively. So if we do see a really popular plugin, there's always the goal that, hey, this may end up inside Figma as a native tool. I think that would be really exciting as well, really just showing the growth that Figma will have from these plugins. So moving forward with our next steps in this series, we've got a good foundation so far. We've talked about components and some hotkeys and how to use plugins. I think we're ready to start doing some actual design practices. So then the next episode is us going over how to design this hero landing page for, uh, for a hotel, for a fictional hotel service. This is gonna be our first design practice where we're gonna use all the skills that we've learned so far to make this. Until then, I'm Max. 